Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another tasty video. We are going to look at something today which is pretty exciting. It's that time of year where Adobe release a bunch of big updates to all their kind of main apps. And we're going to look at Lightroom Classic. We're going to look at one particular feature which I think is genuinely genuinely going to be quite useful. It's something that was already kind of available in Photoshop, but it's very easy to use in Lightroom, but it just just adds a little something. Just adds a little something to your images. Let's dive in. It is of course Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, we should be here for a Tuesday. We bring you a brand new, fresh, fresh photography tutorial. <laughs> I try to keep a straight face, not possible. Not possible, I'm afraid. Let's dive into Lightroom. We're going to talk about one of the new features that is available in the latest update. So this is Lightroom Classic version 13. So the update should be available on your Creative Cloud app. This is a photo that I took at the Kent Cookery School. So we actually had an event there doing some food photography, stuff like that. We'll actually probably have a video at some point about a bunch of that stuff. But this is one of the photos of the chef who is cooking a bunch of tasty food. We're going to use this photo to actually look at one of the new features, which is called Lens Blur. Now on the right hand side here, you know, where you've got all your editing parts to your photo. Obviously I've done a little bit of an edit on this already. If we scroll right down to, you know, we've got transform and effects below that where you can do your vignetting. Between those, there's now a new panel called lens blur. And this is going to allow us to apply a new look to the photo. This is something that is very similar to a neural filter in Photoshop already, which is called depth blur. Very similar kind of idea. So all we have to do initially is click apply and what Lyrum is going to do is work out where the subject is so in this case it's pretty straightforward and it's going to apply a kind of depth of field effect to the photo now before we go any further i've found that this works best on photos a little bit like this where we've already got a little bit of a blurred background it just seems to work much better for that it's not going to really change the focus so you can't pull things into focus that weren't in focus or anything like that but it is able to enhance that out of focus feel, the bokeh behind. So as you can see already, just by clicking apply, it's worked out the subject and it's blurred the background a little bit and it's doing it in quite a sophisticated way. So if I come here to this little eye icon and actually click and hold, you can see this is what it looked like before we applied it. This is what it looks like afterwards. You can see it's actually, it's actually making a fair bit of difference, right? It's, it's blurring, it's blurring this background. And like I say, it does it in a really interesting way. So we've got a few other controls here, including down here, this depth map, which Lightroom actually builds of the image. We're gonna take a look at that in a second. You've got controls for things like the blur amount. So as you probably expect, if I bring that all the way up to 100, Lightroom is gonna blur the background much more aggressively. Now, if I turn this off and on, you can see that is much more intense, but actually it still looks reasonably natural. If you look at the door behind our subject here, it's pretty blurred out, but the stuff that's a little bit closer, not so much. I think it's pretty impressive actually how this works. Let's bring this back down to about 50. We can also affect the shape of any kind of bokeh lights that might be in the image. We don't really have any in this image, but we could make them more kind of rounded. We can make them more sort of pentagony. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. And it's an interesting thing to be able to control. It's going to be relatively subtle as well which I think is awesome. Now let's come down to the depth map because this is really where the magic lies within how Lightroom is doing this. Now you don't really have any control over how Lightroom builds the depth map. But if you look at this diagram here from left to right, we've got different colors, right? Yellow and white towards the left, then it sort of goes to orange and then pink and then purple and then black right over to the right. The colors towards the left are going to be closer to the lens. Right, and as we go towards the right, orange, then pink and purple, is everything further and deeper into the photo. And we can actually see this on the photo by clicking this little tick box, visualize depth. So if we do that, you can see how Lightroom has built the depth map on the photo. So yellow, the stuff closest to the camera, orange, and then it sort of goes to this sort of pink. Our subject here is sort of pink, a little bit of orange, and then behind it goes to purple and then black right into the background. That allows Lightroom to work out what should be blurred and what shouldn't. And you can actually tell it what you want to be blurred in the photo. So we can see here, if I mouse over this little kind of depth map diagram, you can see this box, right? And I can affect how big that box is. Now that box 
is essentially what you're telling Lightroom to keep in focus. So everything from the kind of furthest away yellow parts, which is probably about here, orange, about here, bit of pink, which is our subject, and then past that, so back here where it starts to go pink to purple and then to black, that's out of focus. And this part, the sort of yellow and white, out of focus. Everything in the box, in focus. If I drag that box, it's actually gonna to change to showing everything that's gonna be in focus is in white. So you can see as I drag this closer to towards the camera, you can see that we're getting less and less of the yellow. If I drag it away, you can get more of the yellow. And if I drag the other side, you can see the white extends back into the photo, or I can, I, you know, I can, I can take our subject here out of focus. I can move the entire box like so. It's gonna look bad. It's gonna look really bad, but I could do that. And if I actually turn off visualize depth, you can see it's now blurred our subject here, but it's not gonna pull things that were out of focus into focus. It's just not gonna be able to do that. There's no way that would work. So I've obviously messed this up now. The easiest way to reset this is just above this depth map, you've got two little, little icons here. This one here is just gonna allow Lightroom to select the subject and focus on that. So if I click that, it's gonna reset the box based on our subject here. If you don't wanna do that, you can also use this manual kind of point focus system. So you can just click this and you can actually then click anywhere on the image. So for example, I've clicked here. That's now focused on our subject, but you can see the box is a slightly different shape, that change size. So if I do that again, the subject, that's gonna keep a lot more in focus. It's gonna work out where the depth of field should be. So we've got a little bit more leeway kind of in front and behind our subject. Whereas point focus, if I now click on our subject, is going to make that a smaller box because we are really just focused on this small part here. And now if I go for blur up to 100, you can see it's probably gonna be less natural, yeah. I still think it looks pretty good, actually. I still think it's really impressive, but it's a little bit less natural actually over, over here, for example, because we've got a much shallower focal plane now that we're creating digitally, but we're creating using this. So for the most part, Lightroom does an incredible job of identifying the subject and working it out. Now, if you want to refine it, you can also then come down here and you can click on something like focus or blur. So let's go focus, for example. It's gonna create this brush tool and you can literally just brush on areas of the photo that you want to be more in focus. So you don't want Lightroom to blur those parts. You're telling it, nope, that bit's supposed to be in focus and vice versa, we could also go blur. So in this case, I mean, it'd be a terrible, terrible example, but if we wanted to actually blur the knives, I don't know why you'd want to do that. It looks awful. But if you did, you can actually just paint that on. But, you know, this is a really useful tool. I'm going to bring the blur down to about 70 here. And looking at that, I don't know that I would definitely be able to tell that this was affected in this way. I think it's really, really subtle and natural. This was taken on a 50 millimeter lens. I've actually punched in a little bit in the, in the edit anyway. It wasn't the best kind of crop. If we look at kind of what I did here, I've punched in like this anyway, right? I wanted it to get closer, but then the composition would be different. So I've punched in a little bit. It feels a bit more like an 85 millimeter image. And so I've upped that blur a little bit, but it feels natural because I've punched in because it was already blurred out. You know, so it's taken at f1.4. It feels really good. I think this is a really, really cool tool. Now, am I going to overuse it? Absolutely. Of course I am. Of course I am. We all get way too excited about these kind of tools. I'm absolutely going to going to use this too strong on an image. It's going to look silly. I'm going to undo it. It's fine. But once we get past those, you know, teething problems, I don't know about you, but I just get so excited about new tools like this and I start using them and they shouldn't be there. Once we get past that, I think this is a great tool to be used subtly if you just want to enhance a bit of blur. What you want to be doing is using this to really enhance what's already there, which is true of most editing, to be honest with you. You are enhancing what was already in the image. So actually trying to enhance what's already there, a little bit of a blurred background, sure, you could enhance that a little bit, make it a little bit more blurred, give yourself a little bit more separation, but it's all about kind of less is more, right? Either way though, I think this is a pretty cool tool. I'd love to know what you think. Is this something you would use? Would you use it sparingly? Would you go way too far because you're excited like I'm going to? I'd love to know. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. It's always super interesting to know your thoughts about this kind of stuff. We've got a great community. I love learning from you guys just as much as I love doing these videos. So absolutely let me know what your thoughts are about this. Are you going to use it? Are you going to use it? Did you use it in Photoshop? It's easier here, I think, but I'd love to know. Otherwise, you can check out a full list of all the kit we use for these videos and a bunch of these photos down in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, Thanks for watching.